I'm going to show you how to storyboard in Blender. Sounds crazy, right? Uh, when I was on the Mario movie, there was one of the scenes of Mario running through a level that for some stupid reason, I decided to do like a crazy 360 camera shot, turning around him, going up and down, in and out. And, uh, and I decided to do it in Blender. Um, so it was a steep learning curve. I had to kind of teach myself a lot of things. I had a little bit of experience with it before, but never storyboarding. And I came up with some techniques. Some of them are like key techniques, the way to, to parent the, the Blender grease pencil to, to the camera. Uh, it's like you're drawing on, on glass and other cool techniques like that that I wanted to share with you today. So let's, uh, let's dive into it. All right, let's start with some basics. If you already know this stuff, feel free to uh, skip forward to the next section. So this is the default window. We get the famous blender cube here. First, let's see how to move around the camera. So you press the middle button and you drag. This is what happens. This is shift middle button and this is the mouse wheel. Um, and then these are the windows. This is the, the main window. You can change the type here. Every window you can change the type of the window. Like I can make a uh, 3D viewport here, for example. Uh, you can drag around the windows to resize them. You can create a new window, which is super cool, by going to the corner and dragging. And you can collapse it by going to the corner and collapsing. Uh, same goes here. You can any anywhere you want. You can uh, collapse or make a new window like that and right click cancels it. All right, these are the manipulators. You can move, rotate or scale um, or use all of them in this in this tool right here on the left side, transform, so you can do all of these things. In addition, what I always use is G to move, R to rotate and S to scale. Uh, undo is control Z, of course, the most important thing. And then you can uh, move on the axis. So uh, G, X, move on the axis and Y move on the Y axis. Same goes for uh, for uh, rotate on the Y axis or on the X axis. So I use it all the time. These shortcuts. Um, they have the 3D cursor, which is Shift, right click. Very important. Uh, and I can create new objects by Shift A, and I can create whatever I want. See a mesh. I can create a, a cube here. I can create a, a sphere, whatever I want. And I can even create a grease pencil. Okay, that's what we're going to use to do our storyboards. Grease pencil blank all right so now let's delete all the objects we don't need i'm going to the outliner i'm deleting all the objects by pressing x and approving it and now i have this empty grease pencil right here that i can start drawing on now we have the different modes we have object mode to move the different object around edit mode or sculpt mode for the grease pencil i use uh, for the storyboard edit and draw and sometimes sculpt that's kind of cool to do the, the sculpt as well so let's go to draw mode and here you can see the different properties of uh, of um, the grease pencil. We have the, the material and the, the data. Uh, so that's the different layers you can play around with the settings. The different things here are uh, less relevant. Uh, I'll go over them a bit later how to render stuff. It's these two. And uh, but these, these two are important because that's the, what color I want to paint, whether I want my stroke to fill or not and what layer I want to paint on. So we're good. We have our layer. We have our color, which is black. So we can start drawing. All we have to do, we go to draw mode and it gonna, it's going to draw in the angle that, uh, that I'm pointing at. So that, that's why I'm doing view. Uh, I can do uh, on the front axis and then it's going to draw on the front axis. So when I turn around, it's on the front and no matter where, where I draw, it's going to draw it on the front axis. You see, it's a 3D object basically. Okay. So and uh, F is to increase the brush size, for example, and uh, can draw whatever I want. Draw a little minion. I draw a lot of minions. And then you can change the, the tool from pencil to, uh, for example, to, to marker or whatever you want, whatever tool. Uh, Whatever cool tool you want to use, you can you can do it like that. Whatever you like.
before we jump into the fun part of the drawing let's talk about the setup this is the most important part of this video so you want to stay focused for the next three minutes or so this is my scene setup i have two windows here one is the 3d view that i use to animate the camera and other 3d elements and the other one is the drawing i usually go like this when i go 3d and like this when i do the drawing but i jump back and forth you have a lot of flexibility you can decide a different camera move in the middle after you draw a little bit which is something you can't do when you just draw the backgrounds by hand so that's something really cool it gives you a lot of flexibility so this is the 3d window um, as you can see here my camera is in, it's in 3d space uh, the idea of the scene is i wanted to showcase one of my uh, characters from our game lila the cat and she's charging this giant robot this is another asset from our game, Full Steam Fluffy X Machina. And I'm creating this uh, crazy trailer shot. So the camera moves closer to the giant and then she's gonna do some crazy things. I don't wanna spoil it for you. But the point is that you can see that the camera is moving in 3D space, all right? So let's see how to navigate these cameras. This year we already went over it when we went over the basics. And uh, this camera, is the drawing camera you can also make it a 3d view no not a problem if you want to pop back into the camera you just press the camera icon here and then if you want to zoom in and out use the mouse wheel and shift middle click you pan around okay you also have some tools here to flip the camera you need to enable these grease pencil tools in the add-ons okay you can flip the camera another very important window is the dope sheet okay so you go to uh, animation dope sheet and this is where you put all the animation keys you can set a new key by selecting the object you want to animate and you press i for a new key or you can just move it and if this blue thing is ticked it's auto auto keying if i select my grease pencil tool you'll see i have a key in every frame you know as i was drawing if I select my uh, camera, you see I don't have a key in every frame. I want it to be a smooth move. That's why I don't. Another very important thing I recommend is setting the scene up with 6 frames per second, not 24. We usually do 24 frames per second for smooth animation. For storyboard, I use 6, and then I edit it uh, in an editing program, and I can speed it up or uh, slow down. But that way, I can really go fast and storyboard the entire scene. If you want to separate your scene into different shots, you do it up here. When I have scene one, two, and three, I have different scenes here, uh, and you create a new scene by duplicating, by pressing this thing. I found places to, uh, to cut. And the last thing is your keyboard shortcuts. So I jump a lot when I'm in drawing mode, which is most of the time, I jump a lot between, uh, if I go to my main grease pencil, is I go th between object mode, edit mode, that I can move things around, draw mode, and sculpt mode, that I use a lot. It's, it's very useful and I have to jump between each mode very quickly. So I recommend setting up your shortcuts like that. So you go to preferences, key map, and then you wanna look for um, set object mode. So I have uh, you know, F3 as uh, draw mode, F1 as object mode, F2 as uh, edit mode, and F4 as scalp mode. And that brings us to the most important tip of this entire video, the way I set up the camera. Right here we see the camera parent, which I called Camring, okay? And the secret is that I parent the camera to it. I parent the camera to it and I parent the grease pencil to it okay so the grease pencil is kind of like a piece of glass that I parent to the camera and I can draw on it you know so when I move the camera setup the piece of glass moves with it so I'm basically cheating right there's not an actual cat warrior running around this scene it's just a piece of glass with a drawing of a cat warrior the reason I parent everything to this circle and the reason I make this circle is because if I want to orbit around stuff, all I have to do is position the circle above it. You see, I'm clicking these uh, colors, by the way, to to jump to front view or to top view. 
and I'm gonna put this circle on the giant I'm going to zoom out my camera by moving it out and if I wanna orbit around the giant I can simply rotate that's why I'm using this setup and if I'm if I want to zoom in and out I just move the camera on the Z axis in and out okay and as you can see the piece of glass which is the grease pencil is actually parented to the circle not to the camera so I can zoom in and out okay so how did I do that by pressing the object the child object shift pressing the parent object and doing control P that's how I parent keep transform right here okay and I did the same thing for the grease pencil I parent it to the camera rig control P and that's the biggest secret in addition as you can see I have more grease pencil objects that I use to actually position 3d things in the scene but the biggest one is the one attached to the camera for example here I have an explosion see so the explosion is a separate 3d uh, object in 3d space not connected to the camera but my main character usually that I follow during this shot is connected to that piece of glass that I'm drawing on and with that out of the way let's jump right into the fun part which is making the actual scene Oh, 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 oh,
If you like this video so far, uh, I would really, really appreciate it if you can help the channel jumpstart and uh, please share the video and like it and subscribe and all that stuff. All right, let's get back into Blender. There you go, that's how you storyboard in Blender. Now go ahead and use all this knowledge to create amazing scenes of your own. See you in the next video.